there. Welcome to the Get Cracking podcast, knowledge about what to do and where to start your profession or activity or entrepreneurship journey. We are on the mission to healthy accelerate each one of us to happiness. We help to solve the problems of people being unsure what they want to do and removing initial direction fatigue. And we do it through interviews. There are many different professionals are being invited to these interviews. And today there is a real guest here, Sunny. <laughs> Welcome, my friend. Thank you so much, Roman. This is a pleasure to be here. And it is a big one. The expectations are high. This is the first ever guest episode. So it's episode number two, but you're first ever guest. Stakes are high. Yeah. <laughs> um, at the beginning, uh, we have this maybe tradition in our podcast. You are the first one on the tradition. We ask mm -hmm. everybody to pitch themselves uh, within 60 second time. Okay. And it is done actually, you know, to to let you express yourself in a short manner and then also let you practice your own pitch because I believe this is something helpful, you know, wherever you go. So are you ready to present yourself? I think so, yeah, let's do it. The floor is yours. All right, I'm Sunny Singh. I live here in Helsinki, Finland. And uh, I'm pursuing real estate full time at the moment. And uh, it took me a while to figure figure out what I want to do. I switched few careers, IT, finance, and then eventually found real estate. And I always knew in my life that I would become an entrepreneur. So it was just a matter of finding that one thing that was of uh, interest to me. And it was real estate. And now, currently, I'm pursuing real estate full time. Cool. Half a minute. Seconds. Nice. Crispy. <laughs> nice. Well done. Um, Straight to action. So what do you think, Sunny? Is it mm. important to be able to present yourself or pitch yourself like, you know, in, in the same manner like you did now? It is, yeah. Because you have to, in the real world, you have to be concise. People are not really interested in who, who you are if right. you are not able to provide value. So you have to be really quick and know what to say at, at what place. And, you know, uh, I 100% agree. And then also, you know, what I think is that the practice make it better so yeah. more more we try to present ourselves more we are there and then you know expressing and making it short and concise the better days come and you never know once you it will be useful yeah yeah exactly cool but maybe let's shift the gears and get to the real estate discussion so you are into the real estate would you open up a bit what is your main interest within the real estate field um, it's uh, in the real estate investing side. So mm -hmm. I basically um, really like to look for opportunities and build up deals because it's so convenient in the real estate. There's so many domains within the real estate. Mm -hmm. You can go to storages, you can do Airbnb, you can rent the apartments, you can renovate them. So many things to do. So for me, it's uh, looking for real estate opportunities and building the deals. Interesting. And then you already mentioned that you are more on the entrepreneurial journey. So I'm sure we will get back to that. But mm. uh, our podcast a lot about tuning backwards and finding actually the story. How did you end up with uh, with what you do now? So do you remember the time when you, I don't know, was it a rainy day? You've been sitting there, <laughs> and, there and then you're like, hey, I want to do real estate. So how did it happen to you? I think there were many rainy days, actually. Um, Welcome to Helsinki. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> uh, as I said before, I, I used to work in IT. I uh, worked there for four, four years. And during that time, I kind of felt that it wasn't my thing. There was boredom. There was unfulfillment. There wasn't really a motivation to carry out the task that right. they were giving to me. So the next thing I was thinking it was finance. And then I kind of diverted to finance, right. worked there for four years, and realized, no, this is not my not thing. Well, Again, okay. same thing happened. Many rainy days. But then eventually, um, I think at one point, I thought to myself that I need to buy an apartment at some point. So right. it would be beneficial for me to learn about this stuff. So I kind of went to it. And the more I started learning about and reading about real estate, it just took me in. I just couldn't resist of the urge of right. learning more and more about this subject. So basically, was it your <coughs> kind of your pain or was it your problem? So you eventually you've been searching for yourself, but yep. then somehow you fine tune to the professional real estate. Or yeah, yeah. Basically, this this is what happened. So I was just looking f to learn myself. Right. But then it kind of daunted me that uh, I could actually be employed right. in a real estate job. Right. 
and learn from there than to just do everything yourself and learn by doing mistakes. So then, if I understand correctly, then you actually got uh, you moved from financial sector to to work for somebody in real estate. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was the you know the changing factor? So what uh, got you this job? So because I, I I could imagine that you're coming to the interview and you're like, hey, I'm from financial sector. Can you yep. you know can you let me do the real estate? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, while I was working in the finance sector, right. I already had kind of uh, started my real estate journey. Mm-hmm. I used to buy properties, rent them, and stuff. So I was also already learning. So I had something to show the new employer. Was it already kind of your entrepreneurial journey then at the same time? So was it for yourself or? I didn't have a company back then. Okay. It was my kind of personal journey. Right. But it was kind of, you could say that there were seeds Dang. planted already yeah. at that time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then, so if I understand it correctly, so you got basically to the interview or to the discussion with the real estate company. Yeah. And then you already had some certain actions to show that, hey, I've bought this apartment, right? Yeah. 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 Dang. They were like asking quite a bit of questions that mm-hmm. one who already had kind of experience would know how to answer. Right. Like how do you do the negotiations and stuff like this. So, so give, they, who yeah. could you give us, you know, an example of this difficult question? Yeah. For example, there was, uh, mm, let's say, a question about if the realtor tells you that, hey, I cannot take your offer. Mm-hmm. There's already an offer on the table. How would you reply to that if you want to uh, put the offer still? So what what should you do? You should ask him uh, the offer you have. Mm-hmm. Uh, when does it? When's the deadline for it? And then you can kind of pick up if right. the realtor goes like, "Oh snap, uh, uh, there, there's no time right. or something." You can kind of understand he's lying yeah. or something. Or if he says, "Hey, yeah, it's 8 p.m. today tonight," mm-hmm. then you can be like, "Okay, there has to be a one." So just just like small stuff like that. Okay, got it. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> and then. So the negotiations were here. It is important, and you you can you can actually learn negotiations, and mm-hmm. you understand what what are the tactics and techniques, and what's important for the parties. Um, what are other skills that you found you know useful or needed in for this position? Um, people skills, right. just communication, as like like negotiations, mm-hmm. of course, but just how do you communicate with realtors? Right, because. Um, Back in the day, let's say two years ago, the market was really different. Right. And you going there for looking for investment opportunities, everyone was looking for investment opportunities. Mm-hmm. So the key was to make, build a good connection with the realtor, for mm-hmm. example. So if you weren't like behaving properly, not taking, you know, yeah. taking interest in that realtor, so it's like a he wouldn't sell you. Yeah, it was more like a partnership. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So you uh, had to build value. And then from the skills, let's say from the real estate as well how how do you learn to understand is it a good property or a bad property because you know a person like me i, I don't know you show me two listings and i'm like mm. yeah they're, they're fine they look pretty <laughs> yeah yeah that is true um i think it comes with uh, you just learning about the basic stuff let's right. say in the finnish market there's mm-hmm. already two good books available mm-hmm. that teach you the basic stuff and uh, you can learn like the what renovations there are coming What's happening with uh, with the co- housing company? Right. How are the financials? Yeah. So once you kind of get the hang of what things to look for before you go I- deep into the property, yeah. then you can kind of sort them out by which is a good one, which is a bad one. So eventually, you kind of have this, you know, let's say call it a checklist mm. that you would go through, and then you would approach the property for like a buying or renting, right? Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, is there any? hidden stones so where's the where's the hidden stones in the real estate market hidden stones yeah i mean like you know that you buy the property and mm-hmm. then something goes wrong so you w- what it is that goes wrong usually is there any uh well there's actually many, many <laughs> things that can <laughs> go wrong let me uh the put kiri monte yeah put kiri monte the plumbing renovation um if you are not kind of certain about the upcoming renovations right you might go really wrong because mm. then you just you will be messed up pretty bad there might also be something wrong with the housing company there must right. be a case court case going on and there might be a possibility for the let's say maintenance fee to go mm. really up or like a bunch of different things you could have a 
bad neighbor there <laughs> but that's more into detail okay but, but yeah. maybe maybe bad neighbor you cannot know you know up front but yep. this all other things it sounds that you know if you do proper homework mm. if you do your due diligence yep. you basically save you know what you're buying is yep. it true yeah it is yeah um if you just you know do your research right. check the papers properly check the apartment properly yeah talk with the realtor talk with the property manager you'll get most of the answers yeah. there and you can be quite certain that yeah. that you're okay to so go then the, the picture gets complete and then you know you go for buying yeah. cool yeah. yeah um something i i thought right now so you are on the real estate journey for quite a while already have there been a time when you you've been challenged when you thought that like Hey, I don't know if I if I want to go this way or you know should I go back to finance or have there been a moment like that? Uh, I think yeah, uh, this was back in 2019. I was right. buying my second property back then, and I actually bought it, the, the apartment. But wait, this is yep. right in the beginning of your journey then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. So this is like going okay. deep straight right. away. And after I bought the property, like I'd say two weeks in, everything is going smoothly until now. Okay. But then I call, uh, get a call from the property manager. Right. And getting a call from the property manager is like really unusual. They, they usually There's don't call something you. <laughs> wrong. There's something wrong. And I pick up and he's like, hey, yeah, uh, do you own this apartment? And you can, you know, sense that your yeah. heartbeat just goes faster <laughs> and faster. <laughs> and he says, hey, your tenant is throwing all the furniture he has no to the way. stairwell. And I'm like, oh, my God. Okay. Is this <laughs> what I've gotten into? Right. But um, I'd say that was one of the moments when I was like, is this the right track I'm taking? Do I want to deal with these issues? But you have to understand that kind of these problems come with the life right. you want to build. If you want to live a small life, there will be small uh, problems. You want to live a bigger life, you want to do your own thing, right. then there will be different problems. Yeah. And you just have to deal with them. So, yeah. yeah. That was one of those. So it is one of those maybe potentially turning moments, I mm. think. Kind of, you know, you're you're just started. Yeah. And then you're like, yeah, everything's going to be smooth. I'm going to, yes. you know, get lots of cash. You yes. know, I'm going to be cool. And then the person is just throwing away things from his apartment. Yeah. No way. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And it was kind of my first time also like dealing with this kind of issue. Right. So I didn't have no knowledge how to, you know, deal with the yeah. person who's throwing stuff in the stairwell. But, you know. but then also on the contrast, so you just <coughs> mentioned before about the importance of people skills, how important it is. And now in this story as well, I think it is important, let's say with tenants, to understand who are the tenants, right? And how, how and also you probably need to solve this situation, you know, post problem, right? So you yeah. needed to have a talk with this tenant, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. It was like a, you couldn't take the hostile approach, yeah, of course. Yeah. You had to be really chill about it and just talk it through. Really uh, professional. In this, yeah. in this uh, particular case, I was fortunate that there was his, uh, the tenant's mom was right. also present in the relationship. So I, I, I just talked with her and with the guy and yeah. kind of sorted it out with them together. Yeah, amazing. Um, Uh, and then also since then I see that you've been you know straight on a journey nothing nothing kind of changed your mind cool mm. great story um, maybe you've mentioned already that there are couple books that uh, you refer to as a, you know maybe good to read if you are pursuing the real estate journey and I think are you ready to share those names Like yeah, the, sure, sure. What are the books? In the, for the Finnish real estate market, there are two really good books. There right. are Osta Vuokra Vaurastu right. and Sijoita Asuntoihin. Uh, we're going to write them down. Yeah, you know, yeah for we people. can put them there. Um, and for the, let's say for the real estate mindset, there's really good books in the USA. Mm. And one of them is a millionaire real estate investor. Right. It goes really deep into the mindset, how to, you know, approach this real estate yeah. game. And also entrepreneurial, you know, how do you become an entrepreneur? I might not so. know, like, you know, everything, <laughs> many things about the real estate as of yet. But let's say, for example, this rich dad, poor dad, is it is mm. it is it uh, real estate related as well? Kinda? It is. But, uh, you know, the name uh, says that it's just a personal finance book, but it's it so is, much yeah. more. It's so much more. I, I think actually the book was uh, really impactful in my life because right. there's this chapter that says... If you want to become an entrepreneur at right. some point, it is very beneficial for you to choose a job, your nine to five, 
uh, about something that you can up, uh, acquire a skill. Right. For me, it was the real estate. So from finance, I jumped to the uh, real estate because of that yeah. book and that chapter. So it was like a, a but, really okay. So moment. this is this is actually like you know worth of noting in my opinion. This is a big nugget. So as an approach. So you don't know anything about real estate, let's say, right? And then it's too early to become an investor. You don't have a cash. You don't have a capital. You don't know how to invest. So yeah. then you land the junior job, let's say, as a you know assistant to the real estate mm-hmm. or the mm-hmm. specialist or the real estate manager, probably, right? Yeah. With yeah. some sort of skills, and then you obtain the knowledge while you're in the job. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's so much like convenient, more so much more convenient to go there and learn from others' mistakes yeah. and kind of learn how it's done in the big house. So you can just take all the nuggets and apply it to your business. Yeah, and then you are you end up in the um, let's say controlled environment. So you mm. operate with someone's money. You have a senior members that you look up for, right? Yeah, yeah. It is a great way to learn. Yeah, this is this is a really good one. Yeah, yeah it's it's great. Great. Um, okay, so then we spoke a bit already about the beginning of your journey, uh, about some books. Uh, are there any um, people you look up for in the field uh, in Finland or internationally, globally, from the real estate? Mm, I'd say there's like, uh, like in YouTube, let's say, there's mm. so many kind of virtual mentors that you can follow. Right. Uh, in the US, there's this one guy called Ben Mala. He's mm-hmm. really fun to watch. He's like this uh, millionaire real estate investor who does all kinds of stuff and his lifestyle is just crazy. So you might want to check him out. There's uh, this guy in uh, UK, mm-hmm. St- Steve Hamilton. He also has a YouTube channel and uh, he's doing real estate in the UK market. Really fun to watch. and. Uh, is there someone in Finland? There's actually quite a many. We can maybe put them in the description. I can provide you with yeah, details. Let's, There's let's, I, let's uh, Instagram way. accounts you can follow and learn from cool. so many yeah, people. This is yeah. really beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. And then also, w- while thinking of this, another thing I thought is, uh, at least for me, when I think about the real estate, I think about the, the capital, right? So the flats are expensive. The buildings are expensive. So um, it sounds like it is really capital heavy, to kind of get into and to start to do anything in real estate. Um, what is your opinion? Is like, can you start from you know zero or can you start without the capital and how much capital you need, let's say, to start? Um, well, it's the uh, best way to start is actually re-evaluate right. your current financial, financial situation. Mm. If you don't have capital, then you might not be ready for real yeah. estate because as you said, it's really capital heavy. And usually you need 30% to put down mm. on these deals. Before it was less because the market was different, but now it's getting more tighter. But I think it's also really important to take that first step. If you know you want to pursue real mm-hmm. estate, then you have to, you know, you go start, with it. Yeah. start somewhere, it's yeah. just the way I, I did it. Yeah. I bought the first apartment and I felt that I don't have money for anything else now. <laughs> <laughs> So 30% down and once you kind of, if it's a good deal, right. you can actually build from there. Mm. So it's also, how do you kind of approach it? How, do, do you, you probably you know? also build the credibility, let's say. After the first one, the bank can trust you more. Exactly. And then yeah. you can find some other investors that already invest with you maybe, right? Yeah, yeah. You can do joint ventures. Right. You can do partnerships. You can come up with many, many stuff, but it's just a matter of you, how do you want to approach it? Yeah. You can just be an investor who likes to keep it to himself, right. or you can become a person of uh, value by yeah. providing, let's say, you find a deal for someone else, and you help them with that, and you kind of build relationships, and you, other, like in the later, you you get more value out of it. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Um, and then also, like what I'm curious, what I'm what I'm noticing is that the market is hard nowadays, right? Mm. Uh, yeah. So we are in Helsinki, Finland. I don't know from where you're listening. Hopefully, from international <laughs> global <laughs> podcast, right there. Yeah, <laughs> of course, there's gonna be. <laughs> um, yeah, but we are uh, 2023, uh, post COVID, uh, during the supply chain crisis, during the Russian crisis, and then uh, in Helsinki, the real estate market is quite hard that's mm. what i heard what is what's your opinion and you know now and what you're looking for in the future uh currently as you said real estate market is really hard um uh, realtors are 
saying that any of the apartments they get, it's really hard to sell. Right. The investors are currently on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. There's no more uh, people flipping properties or really small amount of people who are doing that. And generally, if you're looking to buy an apartment, this is a really good time. Yeah. If you can handle, let's say, all the you know financial costs, right. the mortgage and everything. But now is the really good time to buy your own apartment. Okay, so yeah. then for own, yes. Yeah. For the flipping, yeah. not, not not that good of a deal. Of course, you can flip in any yeah. market, but it's just a matter of your skills. Right. You have to know really particularly where you're buying. Yeah. Because, like, again, before, it was so much easier to buy from anywhere, kind yeah. of, <laughs> just make a good profit, but now it's, it's getting harder. And, and harder. then also, it just maybe to kind of continue to expand on this topic. So mm. flipping and then buying you on is not the only business, let's say, or areas of within the real estate. There is a lot happening in the, you know, property management, let's mm. say, right? And uh, uh, facilities itself. And then how do you utilize the existing facility? So something that I'm thinking a lot is that if you have an office during the daytime, in the evening, it's free. It's nobody using this space at all. So can we utilize it for, you know, workshops or mm. some gatherings or can we do some parties or yoga classes in, yeah, the, in yeah. the office that is empty? So yeah. why not? Yeah. And this is actually quite a fun way to look at real mm. estate because there's usually so much free space that is not being used. Exactly. So for example, as you said, it would be a really beneficial way to utilize that space. Should we open the let's yoga studio? It, yeah, yeah, <laughs> hey, are there any <laughs> yoga teachers listening us online? So please, please contact. <laughs> reach out. <laughs> Me, you and Sunny, we start the yoga studio in one of the one of the properties. Great. Um cool. Shifting gears again and maybe before we wrapping up, uh so you are on the entrepreneurial journey. Would you give us maybe a sneak peek to the future? Where, what is your directions? Where are you going? And what is what is sunny in the future? Mm. Uh, yeah, currently following my entrepreneurial ventures. And in future, I'm currently trying to make the business work so that there's no necessary it's not me necessary to be there right present so i can be anywhere in the world <laughs> right and just you know manage but in the future i would like to scale up currently i'm doing airbnb so scale that up mm -hmm. to uh, 20 properties mm -hmm. that, that is my initial goal and also build the portfolio for the rental apartments. what does portfolio mean hmm? what does portfolio mean was it Oh, there's like uh, properties that I've rented out. Right. So building that also to uh, to a healthy healthy amount of properties. Uh, like you mean the long term long term rental? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. so you're looking into the long term rental portfolio. Yeah. As well as the the R Airbnb, Airbnb, which is yeah. short term. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Are you also looking to the let's say management services? So if if you have twenty. Airbnb plus the long terms, it is quite a lot. So you would also need to look into the how you manage all of those. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There, of course, building, for example, Airbnb need, uh, means that you have to have cleaners also. Right. So I'm already building a team. Right. And in the future, there will be also people who will be managing these properties. Yeah. yeah. And, the, you know, the, the reason why I bring it up, because on this stage, you're not only the, um, you know, the real estate entrepreneur, you are becoming, let's say, you know, a businessman or entrepreneur because it's a lot of operational work, lots of, let's say, you know, you need to pay salaries, you need to make teams, you need to, you know, use some software products. So, so it's it becomes way more complex, yep. but then also it becomes more interesting. So. Mm, exactly, yeah. This is like a really steep learning curve. Right. Because other, uh, before it's been, you know, someone paying you a salary, right. but now you're building it yourself yeah. and you have to make really good decisions <laughs> going you, forward. You better do, yeah. yeah <laughs> as you know, most entrepreneur uh, like companies fail, so right. you have to be really careful where yeah. you're going and stuff. Yeah. Cool. Sunny, but I see that, you know, your your eyes full of fire. So uh, I wish you all the best of luck to building this, you know, portfolios of long and short term rentals and then the operational under that. Um, how you, do people find about you and how do they connect with you? What's, what's the good way to, you know, learn more about Sunny? Um, I'm on LinkedIn. Right. Uh, you can find it by uh, typing my name and uh, I'm on Instagram also. We can put the Nick on yeah, the Yeah, we're going to put everything also. in the show notes, it's called. Yeah, I'm, I'm still getting so. used to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
but those and if you're like wondering about something about real estate you can reach out i'm i'm always uh, ready to help about this stuff it's a really passion of mine so eager to help yes definitely and then you know when sunny says that he's ready to help he is literally ready to help so if if you are starting so you know don't hesitate just maybe shoot him a message and you know there might be some common interest going on yes. but hey i think that's the pod Thank you very much, Sunny. Really appreciate you coming Thank in here. Thank you, Roman. Thank you. Uh, this was really great. Great podcast. For everybody else, if you have not subscribed yet, I've learned this. You know, you always ask people to subscribe <laughs> to your things. <laughs> if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe Click to the channel. The subscription button. <laughs> yes. Uh, leave it a review. This is especially important for me because I'm just starting. I have no clue how how it sounds for you now, how it will be sounding, but you know, I want to be better and I want to bring some, you know, some good nuggets to you. So, thank you everybody. Have a great day. Bye. See you. Bye.